Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harrison. I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we have a discussion for you, which is uh, the Girl Scout cookie tag. So I was tagged by uh, Read by Fred, a channel that I've watched a load of great non-fiction reviews on. And um, I uh, he tagged me in this Girl Scout cookie tag, which was created by Melinda. Uh, I wrote down Melinda in my notes and then forgot to write down her full channel name, uh, which is very sensible. But uh, everything will be in the links in the description, so please do make sure that you uh, watch, uh, watch her and read through all the notes. So uh, we have got, let me look, seven. Uh, so I've got my notes here. So on the old uh, Kindle Scribe, watch the review. Um, I have got seven prompts here based on seven different cookies. So here's some fun context for you, which is that um, we don't have Girl Scout cookies in the UK. And I've only been to the US twice. And both times I was in the US, I did not have any Girl Scout cookies. Uh, I was there for work on one occasion and the other for my honeymoon. So I've never had a Girl Scout cookie. Uh, they look delicious. Um, and I'm currently fasting uh, on intermittent fasting, which is why I've got a cup of black coffee here. So let's make me salivate and hungry and let's talk about some biscuits. Cookies. So the first one is trefoil. So um, uh, as with all of these, I pretty much don't know what the cookie's like. However, the trefoil prompt is a classic book that you love. So for my classic, uh, I am picking Dracula by Bram Stoker. Uh, this is the first ever novel that I read. Um, so I was 11. Um, I had read um, like chapter books and like novelizations of films and like uh, tie-ins and things like that. But I don't feel like I had read an adult book until I read Dracula. Um, and uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I really like that it is an epistolary novel. Um, so for those of you not familiar, epistolary means that it is made up of documents. So letters, notes, diary entries, uh, book pages uh, from kind of uh, fictional, non-fiction books. Um, so epistolary novels are like a really interesting challenge. Um uh, if you get one in the modern day, I find that I find them to be really, really good. Um, and I, I feel like I have only really read one since I got back into reading, which is Piranesi. Um, and Piranesi is like, uh, I'm pretty certain it's made up of like diary entries. So maybe that's more of just a diary than an actual epistolary novel where it's made up of loads of different stuff. Um, the loads of different stuff is the one that I find the most interesting. Um, but Dracula, um, I really like the world that it creates of um, how kind of the vampire lore works. I like the concept of Renfield as like the vampire's familiar. Um, and that obviously has continued on into fiction. We see it in everything now, even up to things like uh, the Blade, the Marvel movies from the early 2000s. Um, familiars were a big part of that storytelling. So... Yeah, Dracula has obviously had its impact on the world and is probably one of the most famous classics in terms of novels, um, especially one of the most famous science fiction and fantasy or horror novels. I would say probably only Frankenstein is more famous or popular of like the proper early classics. Um, if you haven't read Dracula, I do still think it holds up, um, despite the fact that um, Read by Fred actually did mention that Dracula was the uh, book that everyone loved that he didn't like. Uh, but I do still think it holds up, and I do still recommend it, and still recommend you read it. Well, maybe we should do a reread for Dracula. Maybe we'll do it in uh, October for spooky season or something. Next prompt is Lemon Ups. So this is for a book that you find inspiring. Um, little known fact... The year before I got into reading Brandon Sanderson, um, I had been reading a lot of books. 
Um, although I refer to Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn books as me getting back into reading, I actually read the year before like 10 or so books, which isn't many for me now. I've, I mean, I've already read more than 10 books in 2024. But uh, all of these books were non-fiction books about ultra-distance athletes. So um, many of them were about like normal people who um, have run ultra marathons and things like that. Um, I really like ultra marathon running. I really like stories about it. Um, and while I was training for my first ultra marathon, I spent all of these the long miles on the roads listening to books about people running ultra marathons. Um, you get loads of technique tips and support. But also, they're just very entertaining. So, the book that I've picked is Finding Ultra by Rich Roll. So, this one isn't massively 100% appropriate for my chosen sport of ultra distance running because he's an ultra distance triathlete. However, um, I have found the, the real inspiring thing for me is how he pulls himself up out of addiction and into, you know, so he's um, a drug addict. And um, I believe possibly alcohol as well. Um, and he kind of replaces that with food. So he eats quite healthily, but he's just eating so much and so much and so much. And then he one day is walking upstairs and he realizes he's like out of breath halfway up the stairs. And he's like, he has an instant snap where he's like, well, this can't, this can't go on. This can't happen. And something kind of similar happened to me. Um, in that I just realised how unfit and overweight and unhealthy I was. Um, and that started my obsession with, uh, I say obsession, my interest in um, losing weight, weight, getting healthier, getting fitter, um, which has kind of taken a backseat in the last few months due to other stuff. But uh, I am running a half marathon in May. That would be good fun. Um, anyway... So, Funny Ultra by Rich Roll. He reads the audiobook. Um, Rich is a podcaster. He has um, one of those like self help style interview important, interesting people podcasts. But I think he's like the good guy in that space. Um, he's uh, very smart. He's vegan, which I find very like. I'm not vegan, but I'm a lifelong vegetarian. Um, and my son is actually uh, vegan because we're a vegetarian family and he can't have eggs or dairy, so he's essentially vegan. Um, so um, all in all, really interesting character, really interesting book, um, has made me shift my diet to a lot more plant-based sources. Um, but yeah, uh, really good book, would recommend it. Listen to it while you're out for a run or a long cycle, I guess, or swim. S'mores is the third kind of a cookie. Now, I know what a s'more is. It's two digestive biscuits with chocolate and marshmallow. I've not had a s'more because s'more, s'more, because they're not really a British thing. Um, I'm interested in having one. I'll have one. If someone wants to send me some Girl Scout cookies, please uh, send me anything. I'll eat them all. Um, s'mores is a comforting book. Uh, and this was the hardest prompt for me. Um, all of the others I pretty much had straight away. One which I was like, "This will be the this will be the book. This will solve this." Um, however, a comforting book uh, I found hard, mostly because most of the books that I read um, are quite adult stories um, that kind of have morally grey characters and and that don't end in the best way. So I ended up picking for this one uh, Defiant by Brandon Sanderson. Um, so I think mostly because I felt very attached to these characters by the time we got to Defiant. And I just thought the ending of the book was very good. Um, I liked the way it ended. It was, I guess you could say, a happy ending. Um, I won't go into it too much because obviously that just foiled the book. Um, but I would say that, yeah, I, I was quite comforted while reading it. I enjoyed reading it. It was kind of a, not a cosy experience cause you know, it's like, it's not hard sci-fi, but you know, like the sci-fi experience. But, um, yeah, I found that was probably the most comforting book I read since going back to booktube. 
the whole Defiant series was quite nice and uh, the relationships were really good and strong and well written. I really liked that. Adventurous. So, um, sorry, Adventurous book, but the actual title, the, the type of the cookie is an Adventureful. Um, I didn't look up what any of these cookies were. Probably should have. Um, Adventureful sound delicious. Um, so for adventure books, I picked, and I could have picked a lot of books here because a lot of the books that I read are adventurous uh, because, you know, fantasy books are often about a big adventure. Um, but I felt like the one that had one of the most strongest spirits of adventure was actually the Bound and the Broken series by Ryan Carhill. So I've kind of picked the whole series here because um, it's all kind of one long adventure and I've picked the whole series for the next one as well. Um, but the thing that you often see in a lot of these fantasy books is that um, people are on this big adventure, but the actual... And, you know, it is a big adventure, but the actual events that happen to them are pretty dire and pretty awful. Um, and while there are bad things that happen in The Bound and the Broken, it feels a bit more like an adventure, I guess, than other stuff I've been reading. Like, Brandon Sanderson's stuff doesn't tend to move around a lot, and I feel like moving locations is part of the adventure. Wheel of Time is pretty dire straits for those characters during the most during most of those books. Um, and then, yeah, just try, I mean, tr thinking back, I can't really think of anything that's like, um, just like a jolly old adventure. Uh, so, yeah, I think the closest is probably The Bound and the Broken. Um, we've talked before on this channel about how The Bound and the Broken is probably my favourite ongoing fantasy series and maybe favourite fantasy series of all time, depending on the day you ask. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic world and uh, it's really well designed and thought out and that makes the adventure and the journey um, to be one of the best I've ever read. So, yeah, if you want an adventurous book, I would recommend The Bound of the Broken. So the next one is, uh, I think they're called Samoas or Samoans, uh, which is a blend of two genres. And for this one, uh, the two genres that I read are science fiction and fantasy. And one of the best blends of the two, science fiction and fantasy, is the Sun Eater series. So the Sun Eater series has all of the trappings of science fiction. So it's set, you know, in the far-flung future. Humanity has conquered the galaxy and we're travelling between planets via spaceship. Um, but there are also some fantastical elements, um, especially that are brought in near the end of book one, um, that I found really, really interesting. Um, and are, the fantastical elements are probably my favourite elements in this series. Uh, so if you are looking for something that has that kind of cool, hard sci-fi edge, but with the um, kind of mystery or magic of a fantasy, then I would probably recommend reading some Sun Eater. Um, I've actually done full reviews and spoiler discussions for both of the Sun Eater books I've read. Um, so if you are interested in that, then please watch those videos. Uh, just search my channel, search for Sun Eater. It's all there. Uh, there's a playlist even. Next up, we have Dosey Does, uh, which are books that everyone loves that you hate, or books that everyone hates that you love. And um, I don't hate any books really. Like, if I hate a book, I'm not getting past more than a chapter or two. Uh, but I want to talk about two Brandon Sanderson things here. So. The book that everyone loves that I don't like as much is The Sunlit Man. So The Sunlit Man was the final secret project from Brandon Sanderson. It was the secret project that he wrote knowing that it was going to be published as a secret project. So he wrote the other three as like gifts for his wife and, and for, for his family. And then the final one, The Sunlit Man, he was like, this is for the fans. So... The Sunlit Man, for me, takes a lot of the magic out of the magic systems of Brandon Sanderson, and it turns it from being this kind of magical world to being much closer to a hard sci-fi. Um, and 
I I'm not saying that I'm not interested in hard sci-fi because I would love to read some. I've got the um, Expanse on my uh, Amazon wish list, um, which I'll be giving to uh, my family and friends for birthday presents. Uh, but I have linked it in the channel. If anyone wants to buy me a book, please uh, donate to the charity appeal before you buy me a book. But um, the charity appeal details are at the end of the video. But if you are interested in buying me a book, that list is available. And most of those books I'm looking to review in the next 18 months or so. Anyway, so uh, The Sunlit Man, I just thought it took the science fiction-y stuff, the science, too far and uh, took a lot of the mystery and the magic out of the magic system. Um, when we're also talking about Brandon Sanderson things, where I have an opposing opinion, a lot of people... I don't... This is probably maybe a booktube echo chamber thing, but a lot of booktubers that I watch think that Era 2 of Mistborn, Wax and Wayne's Era 2, is much worse than Era 1. And I can't see anyone else who has this opinion, but I'm the exact opposite opinion. I would say that the uh, Wax and Wayne books are basically all 5 out of 5 excellent books that i loved every page whereas uh the original trilogy of miss trilogy of miss born are very good books um and they got me back into reading i think the final empire is a true marvel in terms of like that's a proper all-timer for fantasy the final empire the first miss born book um is a proper proper milestone all-time a fantasy book i think that it's one of the best i've read but i think the sequels are um not as good at all um and wax and wayne books i just absolutely love that progression that kind of steampunky aesthetic um yeah i just love everything about wax and wayne so that's actually two books for my prompt there so the final prompt before the tags is thin mints so uh, Thin Mint is uh, talk about one of your all-time favourite books. And what I thought I would do is buck the trend from fantasy and sci-fi. So um, I've already talked about Ryan Carhill. I've already talked about Brandon Sanderson a lot. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about a book that I read when I was a teenager that is um, still, you know, top three books of all time which is The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. Um, so this book is set during and then after the Second World War. Uh, we follow uh, Joe Cavalier from uh, Poland, where he's learning to be an escape artist just before Germany invades. He then uh, uses his escape artist skills to escape Poland and uh, to reach family in the US, in New York. Um, and he um, ends up going to stay with his cousin, Sam Clay. Um, and um, Sam absolutely loves comic books and he loves writing, but he can't draw. Whereas Joe is an incredible artist. So they create together a superhero called The Escapist. Uh, who is kind of an analogue for Superman. Um, and it's basically about these two Jewish men and how they move through their lives. Um, and kind of Joe is working on kind of the PTSD of, of uh, World War II. And um, Sam is uh, coming to terms with um, his sexuality and uh, the kind of the world of the day and how it treats him. Uh, so absolutely fantastic book. Um, covers like 20 years of history. Um, absolutely love it. If you have not read it, it is one of... Until I started being a, a big, big fantasy and sci-fi reader again, I would have told you any day of the week that that was my favourite book of all time. Now I've read so many books and I, I, I read quite a lot and it's... It's much harder for me to be as definitive, but I would say it's one of the best, one of the top three books I've ever read, hands down. So the final prompt, as I kind of already hinted, 
is tagalongs. Uh, and this is where you just should tag some booktubers. So I'm going to tag uh, three booktubers that I've talked to a lot on uh, my channel. So kind of booktube buddies. Um, you might be expecting to see Ross and Laura from Hardy's Books here. But I've never seen them do a tag video, so I'm not going to tag them because um, it feels weird when someone tags you and you don't have time or, or interest to do the tag. This has happened a couple of times to me in the past where I've been tagged and I've, I've really had nothing to say because of the kind of reader I am on that tag. And so I've kind of had to like comment on the video and go, oh, thanks for the tag, but um, I'll, I'll leave off for this one. Um, and I don't think that's what their channel's about. So I'm going to be tagging uh, my buds, uh, Kindles and Kicks. Um, absolutely fantastic channel. Um, uh, and I've seen that uh, he's been properly rising up. And I, I think he was on the um, uh, Shelf Center channel recently, which is really cool. Um, and Cash Talks Books, who is my Dresden Files and Wheel of Time buddy. Uh, we have been um, chatting back and forth on each other's wheel of time reviews as we go through and cash is a fairly new channel as well so um please do uh give him give him a subscribe and, and watch some of his videos and then finally uh this is another person who has commented on my stuff however i've never seen them do a tag video but they might want to i'm not gonna there's a very new channel for them so this is cams campbell reads um, so uh, Cam's channel has uh, massively blown up uh, and it's really exciting to see um, him kind of uh, and the way that he's um, put together his channel, the way it looks and that sort of thing I really like. Um, so uh, it's kind of like that kind of more artistic side of, of BookTube. Um, you see a lot from people like Andrew Watson. Um, so anyway... If you want to do some tags, guys, please do this tag. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but don't feel any pressure if you don't want to do so. Um, and I'm going to film another video now uh, because I had a great idea and I felt like I couldn't not do it. Um, so I need to finish this one, wrap this one up. So if you've liked this video, please like it. If you've got anything that you want to talk about that I've discussed in this video, drop down into the comments and we'll have a chat. Please do subscribe if you're seeing this channel for the first time or if you've watched, you know, hundreds of my videos and have never subscribed. Um, uh, every little subscription helps. And, uh, yeah, the more people that join our little community, the better conversations we can have around these books that we love. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.